Good morning, Ian B. Um, good to good to talk to you again. Uh, I wondered if you could just give us um, some time for our five minute interview. Uh, uh, three questions, um, no longer than five minutes, and here we go. Um, 2011 was a pretty busy year for travel retail. What were the main events that stood out for you in terms of development and sales? Yeah, good morning, Tag. Very good morning to you. Um, when we look back uh, at uh, 2011, what really struck me was uh, the the um, the nationalities of China and Brazil and Russia that I think uh, finally made their mark on these on this industry. You know, they are high spenders. We you know that uh, that the Chinese spend uh, per transaction up to 200 US dollars, for instance, when they vis visit the USA. And I'm uh, part of my background was in Asia, and it's uh, fascinating to see this nationality now coming around the world. And uh, as you know, less than one percent of the Chinese population travel internationally today. And you and everybody else in the industry can only imagine what will happen when we we see two percent to three percent even even of the Chinese population travel, and also uh, the Americas, United States uh, is, a, is a country that has always been a great interest to the Chinese, and when the U.S. decides that no visa are no longer required mm. to visit the U.S., I mean that will have a tremendous boom in that business in in in, in the Mid Pacific and on the U.S. West Coast especially. So, um, uh, uh, sorry, if I could ask you to, to speak up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, tip of the iceberg, really, then? That is uh, the, the, the main item that really struck me. And, and you have the Russians, I'm now based in London, and uh, I can see Russians everywhere. And uh, the, the Brazilians, as you know, they are traveling internationally quite a lot now, spending a very lot to you at Portuguese in downtown shops in, in, in New York and Atlanta and uh, Miami and uh, almost everywhere in, in, in the state, in, in the Americas. And uh, secondly, I would say that um, I'm quite impressed by the, the recovery and the resurgence in the sales of liquor or alcohol, partly fueled, of course, by, by Asia, the, the, the business there, and, and uh, the Chinese and the South Koreans uh, buying high-end uh, uh, liquor products. These are the, really the two main, main, main events or the main things that struck me for from last year. That's fascinating. Um, uh, just to, to keep ourselves on time and within our five-minute format, I'll, I'll crack on. Um, in terms of assessing the performance of the business in 2011, what would your feeling be about the overall development in terms of how the industry performs as a whole? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, this industry is very resilient. It had few challenges, but it performed, in my opinion, very well if you compare to, to uh, uh, industries very close, like uh, tourism that uh, I understand grew by 4.4% last year, or international travel that grew by about 6%. And here we are talking about a figure of nearly 18 percent we have the figure pre the, the preliminary result is that uh, or that um, the business ended at 46 billion last year which is up 17.9 percent in 2011. we have to remember however that uh, the u.s dollar weakened last year and we have had inflation price increases and so on and uh, i'm tempted to say that the real growth of the business mm to about half that number or about 9%, which is still well above uh, when we talk about uh, the growth numbers in tourism and travel, meaning effectively that uh, mm -hmm. passenger spend uh, has increased, fueled again by, by the Asian nationalities, I would say. And, and, you know, without pressing you much further, because I realize these are preliminary figures, I mean, just very quickly, uh, categories um, that you feel did particularly well in um, 2011? Yes, in categories uh, luxury goods, close to plus 20 percent. Even tobacco, as you know, that has been a category suffering a lot in the past, mm. so the double digit growth number at 11.6 percent uh, preliminary. Again, the Chinese are, are heavy buyers of tobacco, for instance, and Asians in general. Um, so that was 
very, very encouraging uh, duty grew by about 19 percent. Right. And in terms of channels, again, we, we have to consider that uh, we have excellent downtown shops in Asia Pacific, and they, they, that channel was the store performing channel in last year at 20.1 percent. And uh, as a region, Asia Pacific grew by 22.9 percent. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Well, keeping ourselves on time again, uh, just briefly, I mean, looking ahead, what do you think the major challenges are going to be in um, when we look at uh, the rest of 2012? Well, I think, I mean, this industry has always been dependent on eco-political developments and national disasters, or turn and so on, and we cannot um, look beyond the fact that we need some call, some kind of settlement in Europe, for instance, with the Euro crisis, mm. where we will sort of restore some confidence in people, mm. especially the Europeans, <clears throat> so they continue to, 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 to travel. And uh, hopefully the Euro or this crisis will come to an end during next year or in 2013, and then we will see some sort of stabilization, at least in Europe, which is a very big part of the global business. Also, the Arab Spring in the Middle East might calm down and we will see people again travel to places like Egypt and Libya, Tunisia and Bahrain, for instance. But the main challenge, Tag, I would say, I sincerely hope that we will not have an overheated economy in China. Because if you have a collapse in China and we don't have that ingredient in our industry, I mean, the Chinese travelers, then we are we will face some serious difficulties, I believe. I mean, it's a, it's a big question and um, obviously a difficult one to ask you, uh, but uh, what sort of um, chance do you think there is that might happen? Well, I mean, you read all kinds of press reports and uh, whenever a country is getting a bit overconfident in building skyscrapers like they did in Dubai or uh, in, in other parts of the world, they, they seem to, de de to, to be destined to have some sort of disaster coming after that. I mean, it's a very, very simple sign, but it has always happened in the past. And now China is also focusing on building high-rise buildings. And, you know, the, build, the housing market in China is, somebody called it a bubble already. Mm. And if that burst, for instance, then then we might have some, even if I believe it's going to be short term, but it might last for a few years. And if you don't have the the fuel of the Chinese, the Asians, many other nationalities in the region are very dependent on, on a thriving Chinese economy. And also the other countries, uh, the nationalities in that area will suffer, and then we might be, 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 be set for a sort of a setback again. So we all need to be hoping that doesn't happen, obviously. Absolutely. I mean, China has, is, is already becoming a giant economy, and, uh, you know, if we look 20, 10, 20 years ahead, certainly that is the growth area for, for all suppliers in the, in, the, in the industry, I would say. Well, thank you very much, Ingrid Beer, President of Generation Research, for coming to what I think is slightly over our uh, normal um, length for our five-minute interview. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, thank you. Have a good day, Dag. Thank you.